the party has now got a bag full of money after sacking some dungeon and they come back to town and after some rest and maybe some re recreation they decide it's time to re-outfit and go back out adventuring they walk into the general merchant and they ne pick out various items and they could negotiate a price and they hand the merchant a bag of coins the merchant opens the bag looks at the coins and then screams at the top of his voice guards guards arrest them they're trying to pass counterfeit money I always like Shakespeare's play, The Comedy of Errors, and it provides a whole bunch of ideas to add challenges to your games. And one of them is the thought that two kingdoms may be at war with each other, or somebody says they're at war with each other, and they can put prohibitions on taking currency from the other country. So even though it's a gold coin, it may have the image of a ruler from another country that it's now illegal to take that coinage. And we also see the interesting one where various rulers have been removed from history. I was reading in the news where in Egypt they uh, said that they're going to, all the images of Mubarak have to be removed from all the the buildings and statues and we saw you know the the iconic image of the statue of Saddam Hussein being pulled down in Iraq and it goes throughout history it goes back all the way to ancient Egypt where they tried to remove various pharaohs that they would destroy the images of them so if a coin is minted with that ruler's image on it coming back with that coin because let's be honest most adventurers place you're going to go back into some ancient tomb or some ancient dungeon and you're finding things that are not current up to date you're finding uh, artifacts and golds that have gold that has been there for a while and it may be from a period of time when that ruler is no longer even remembered by most people or if it it may be illegal to sell or possess those coins. So you can run into those things. And then, we, you know, the examples of the United States. What is it? Executive Order 6102 by Franklin Roosevelt in 1933, forbidding the hoarding of gold coin, gold bullion, and gold certificates within the continental United States. You couldn't have them. And it, that was in effect until 1964. And I remember seeing someone I, I knew who was came from a moderately wealthy family. The exception to that was jewelry. And one of the pieces of jewelry they had was it was a one ounce ingot that was basically made into a necklace. I mean, okay, conspicuous consumption. But she had this necklace with this one ounce ingot of gold. And it goes back to the period of time. It was people basically thumbing their nose at the government. We can take an ingot, which is just an ingot, and turn it into a piece of jewelry without melting it down and just attaching a good, another chain to it and wearing it around the neck. And so you've seen protests of that type throughout and what happens is that you know it, that law wasn't repealed it was only partially repealed in 1964 and until 1977 you still had restrictions on contract clauses about gold so we've seen that in the united states that uh our government has put restrictions on ownership of gold and sale of gold and things like that and we see that today if you walked into a bank with twenty thousand dollars in cash that would be reported to the irs i believe that supposedly the number is ten ten thousand dollars or more in cash has to be reported to the irs so when we say oh well that's that's because we're trying to prohibit drug dealers but you also run into people who 
say for example uh, there if you read all the stories about the treasure hunters who have found gold and bullion uh from sunken ships even today that runs into a whole bunch of questions about ownership and you can do these type of things to your gaming parties if that's what you want to do if you want to add complications make them deal where they think oh we're going to do one thing and then throw a complication in on them you can do that by saying whether the gold or the coins that they want are acceptable i did this in an event in a dungeon i called hellwell which is based upon uh roger zelazny's lord of light if you've read that there and i highly recommend it it's a great book there's a place called hellwell where the demons are, are imprisoned but i created my coins in, for hellwell and the coins in Hellwell are a little bit smaller than normal and a little bit thicker than normal. Okay, so you could get by with that. But they're slightly magical. And what does that, why, is, why are they slightly magical? Because they have several interesting features that make them an interesting subplot in some adventures I've had. One is that, the well, first off, just that the coins... A gold coin, if you bite it, that's why you hear the term, you bite the, the coin, that it will actually leave an imprint in the coin. Well, coins from Hellwell, you can bite, leave a print, but over a period of time, the print the print will actually uh, come, fold, come back out. So what happens is the coins always look pristine. Uh, so even if you bite one and then in a month later, you pick up that coin and the bite mark is gone. You know, and actually that makes absolute sense. You, if you could cast that type of spell, people would want to cast that type of spell on the coin. The other thing is, is that it's slightly magical because in certain light, on the face of the coin is the image of a demon. And in certain light and at certain angles, the, the way it's made and the magical properties of it, it looks like the eyes are glowing. Though it's just gold. There's no gems, no jewels. It just, in certain light, it will look like it's glowing. And so this gives somebody a bit of cause, you know, to think about, do I want to take these coins? And the other thing that I did with the coins was that, that they're, they take a slightly higher temperature to melt. Because you end up trying to pass these off and a lot of people go, no, I'm not taking that. That's evil. I don't like that. And so what happens is that you end up going, what they do is they find um, a goldsmith and they say, can you melt them down? Well, the goldsmith will give them a price and then when he tries to melt them down, he realizes he, have to stoke, he has to soak the furnace a bit more because it requires extra heat to melt them. They will melt, but they just have a higher melting temperature before they, they melt. And then once the gold is back to normal and it breaks all the spell, is the heat will, will destroy the spell. So it was interesting. But it, the thing that, that brings to mind the expression on a merchant's face. I saw this in real life. My wife, who recently passed away, was into Hercules and liked, perhaps more than just liked, Michael Hurst. And she had some, shall we say, interesting photos of him because he's done some interesting things on Broadway and off Broadway and various places. And she had this photo that she, she was going to a party of all these ladies who were uh, celebrating the Hercules and some, a little bit of Xena, but it was mainly Hercules. And so she wanted to go get this cake make. And so we go to uh, one of these bakers that have the, where you give them a picture and they will put it on the cake. You can, you've seen this. There actually was one about, they wouldn't make one with a Confederate flag, but they would make one with the ISIS flag. That was in the news. Well, my wife took this photo in and the first two bake, the, the junior bakers looked at it and go, I don't know, can we do this? And they get the main, ba the, the main woman to come over who's in charge of the bakery. And she goes, oh, no, 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 we can't do that. It was too risque. We can't do that to picture. So we had to go back home and find another picture that we could come back and that they would put on the cake because she made this cake to go to this party. And it was all the ladies enjoyed it. And she wanted to, to so that. But this, the idea is you hand these coins 
and somebody looks at them and they go, oh, no, 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 I can't take that. Or they're very concerned. You can add this type of interest to that because now it makes the players wonder about these coins. You can have entire subplots where they come came from. Or then you run into the merchant who goes, you know, I won't. If you're going to pay for those with those, I want a bit more because they're, I have to figure out how to pass them off. So now you, you've settled on negotiations and you hand him the, the, the coins and he goes, not with those coins. That's going to, I need an additional percentage. So you can extract coins from the, from the players using that. And then, of course, if you really want to get, if you're not afraid of the challenges, make the coins larger or smaller than normal. And what I mean by that, that they're either worth more or worth less. I remember playing in a campaign as a, as a player where the gold coins were, that there was a standard gold coin, which was, and it, what happened is we played that way for quite a few months. And then finally the DM said, the, just the arithmetic was getting complicated, trying to figure out how, what things were worth because it does add complications to the DM, but you can run into, you know, you find a bag of gold coins and everybody, oh, it's a bag of gold coins. But now you run into the option that maybe the bag of gold coins has coins of different sizes that are worth more, that maybe some of them have images of rulers that are that. You can add a whole bunch of interest just to a bag of coins and it can make the players Think about things, it's ways to introduce new history hooks, new quests, particularly about things that aren't talked about. You find, oh, well, we can't take that coin because that, uh, I don't recognize that ruler. Or you take it to a, a sage and he says, oh, that's one of these. And they may offer more for it, but they go, you know, and then there's this story about he had this fantastic magic item or more wealth or something that you've got to go find. And it allows you to provide additional hooks. So just the simple currency can make things interesting. And it's no longer just, just a bag of coins. If you like my video, Press the thumbs up button. I'd appreciate that. Or if uh, this interests you, you can always subscribe to my channel. There's a button right above. Uh, I look forward to hearing some comments. Tell me what you think about this and I'll uh, uh, try and reply and uh, we can see if I'll do some more of these. Thank you.